Folks, it has been a long, long time. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the rest of you, but I felt like my October was cursed not to have a single game in it. Uh, so there was that, and then there was still holidays happening in November. But we are finally back. We are finally reconvening to play session number nine of the Turn Grave Affair. Yay. With me, yeah, <laughs> with me as always is uh, is Thread playing our favorite orc champion, Aurora Borl. My grandma, the only orc champion. <laughs> yes, orc champion here. She's ready to rumble. Um, also, maybe a little scared for her life, but that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. We have Zach uh, running Harry Howdy. Harryman. Yep. The typical old man part of the group, you know. Boy maker. Yep. Spellcaster yep. of some sort. The, probably the first one to go. <laughs> one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> we have Shy running Oliver Freefoot. Yes, tis I. Running your happy, friendly, and though short but gentleman. Ooh, I'm bumping things. Short would, but gentlemanly. Uh, I would not say gentleman. Lap Luna Rabbit. You have slaughtered well, so many. Well, not to my creatures. enemies. You have. We've ripped seen off different the heads animes. Of so many kids. We've, yes. we've seen different animes where a butler <laughs> whom is super kind to the individuals are is not so kind to his enemies. Also, I can never remember if your character's last name is Freefoot or Fleetfoot. Because both sound like good rabbit names to me. I got you. <laughs> totally intentional. But yes, just trying to live to the next day. And then, last but not least, we have Decaf running Silas Sunshower. Heck yeah. Uh, you know, again, here, hanging out, kind of in a foul mood, hoping not to die, hoping that my fellows don't die. Uh, doing everything in my power to uh, stay alive and murder any more undead that come our way. Yeah. And so with, stay alive. Stay alive. <laughs> with introductions out of the way, a quick recap. During a celebration of the coming of fall of harvest season, our heroes were at a gathering uh, a called Wetting Day in reference to the sharpening of blades and the uh, the wetting of lips. However, things took a turn for the worst when the celebration was attacked by a mix of ogres, undead, and other sort of undesirables. Um, our heroes ended up knocked out, presumed dead, and loaded on a cart that took them way out to the east. They have since trekked back and are now only a few miles outside of town, outside of a place, Weskerville, where this all started. They have managed to liberate the formerly hostage uh, individuals at this horseshoe tavern, which includes the owner of said tavern, which you guys can find in the friendly NPCs uh, journal, just to remind you. So you guys have encountered a Tress, the proprietor of the horseshoe tavern, a rare uh, land-bound dwarf as most dwarves in this setting are seafarers. But uh, she's been very friendly, very generous to you guys. She gave you a fast flask of fellowship. If you guys would recall that, I think that ended up in the hands of Aurora. Yes, it was very cool. <laughs> yep. Um... You guys have also managed to tie up a ruffian that you have been questioning. You have found out a little bit about what's going on. Uh, this was a coordinated assault against the county of Mydera, um, perpetrated by a family of ogres that the ruffian's boss, a woman by the name of Ruth Cavanaugh, has been uh, almost sort of Following, following like an obedient dog. Um, 
along the way, you guys have made a friend. You guys have found Gentry Stein, an old army buddy of Harry's, as well as a family friend of Aurora's. And having lost his family in the ensuing onslaught of Undead, he has just been traveling with you guys. He doesn't have much else to live for, or given his advanced age, possibly not much longer to live. So, hey, same boat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys are old army buddies, like we said. So, we are picking up once more. It is the evening, uh, edging towards night. Uh, you notice the lights have gone, so they've darkened. You only have the fire really to live off of, to go off of. And you had completed your questioning. As people are sort of setting up to eat, um, you guys, you know, are invited to take up a chair, take up some food. And uh, Tress tells you, you are welcome to use any of the beds here. Uh, feel free to rest the night, stay, and head out in the morning once you are okay. equipped to do so. Is there anything you guys want to discuss or talk about before that happens? Do you guys want to talk amongst the party what your plans are where you're going to head to next from here um so i remember um or the notes i had typed remembered that there's um something going on at the windmills that are turning even though there's no wind um yes. and that a bunch of people were captured um and are like I think being held up there. I yes. know yep. you guys were also told that uh Ruth Cavanaugh, mm -hmm. uh sometimes known as the butcher, who you can find mm -hmm. in your album of adversaries, mm -hmm. uh layers there. Yes. And I know we each have family members. Uh, well uh, some of us have family members that we're trying to get back to. I know Aurora's trying to figure out if her twin brother Raoul is still alive or not. Yep, you all have um, friends or family that you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, just throwing that out there. And that the guy that we captured, we're going to make him work for Tress. Yep, yep. You guys have sort of press ganged him. <laughs> He will work to turn his life around, darn it. <laughs> Whether he likes it or not. <laughs> yep. but, uh, right. Reluctant You will be a good person. Yeah. <laughs> be a good person. So that's exactly it. I don't know. It's a requirement, not an offer. That's right. It's a requirement. There's no other option. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if game plan is we try to. <sighs> is it smart? <laughs> At current status, I mean, of course, we'll be rested and, and full, um, but is is it wise to go straight for the windmill, trying to tear it all down just to be captured by Ruth immediately? You <laughs> can't go tear on? down the windmills. Right, exactly. <laughs> or <laughs> infiltrate a very big layer. So I, I only throw that out there that I know that's in game, but I don't know what we want to do in between. Well, 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 if you guys are discussing that, uh, Gentry is with you. Well, if, uh, if we're looking to approach, the first, uh, first thing we got to do is get around the walls. And you guys all would all know, would all recall, that Westerville is surrounded by a wooden sort of like palisade. Where are uh, the windmills in the city? Yes. Or out? Okay. Because uh, it, is, it, it is built around um, a hill. And so the windmills are on the highest point within the city. And he actually, um, he's, eh, hold on a second. He's, he uh, goes and fetches some parchment, parchment, some charcoal. And he gives a rough but detailed sketch of Weskerville that I will take you to. Can you guys see everything? Uh, I could see uh, a countryside. Can you see like, like from... Uh, Airplane view. Yeah. Oh, yep. There we go. Airplane view. Um. Okay. Yeah. I don't see like what would look like unless Fine. those are buildings. So these right here. Are those those are the windmills. Yep. 
Yep. Ah, okay. Now, was that the same center of town that all the zombies came down on us and we got knocked unconscious? Is that that same area? That was probably more around here. Got it. Okay. There, there are a it's, few uh, uh, outlying farmsteads here and there, but uh, the big thing's probably just going to be getting into town. Yeah, maybe a main gate would not be good. Um, are there any? I don't. I don't know if you would call them side gates or like entrance exit ways that mostly would be used by tradesmen and the farmers. Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, I think most tradesmen go through the, the setting there. Uh, that's where the main gates are, but there are certainly some along the sides for the smaller farmers coming in and out of town. Could approach one of well, them. Guess, yeah, I guess depending on uh, how we're approaching it from whatever direction we currently are, maybe hit one of the outer farms. See if there's someone there before heading further into the city. So the shape isn't exactly right, but you guys are actually right here. The Horseshoe Tavern. Oh, okay. Oh. So we're actually very close. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're you're walking, so it's still like a few hours and like a couple miles, but... Okay, yeah. But yeah, you should be there if you leave like tomorrow morning. As long as you leave at a reasonable time, you guys could certainly there be there by noon, if not a little bit earlier. All right. But if we're doing that, then it would take even longer to hit one of the farms than the city. But what would you guys feel? What is? Uh... I was wondering. Oh, go for it. Uh I was I was trying to do the selection thing, um, but I was wondering about the sides of. Um, so I saw where we we're at with the horseshoe tavern. I'm assuming that big black line is a main gate. Yeah. Right so there. the black lines are just kind of uh, the software I was using did not apply them consistently. So there is a wall ent entirely around like this main section here. Yes. Um, yes, yes. And then a lot of the places like. There's a main gate for this road. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of like the smaller roads that hit, like not all of them will necessarily have a gate, but like there'll mm -hmm. be a gate. Uh, they do have like a smaller gate over here. Um, there's yes. one like, you know, along here. Uh, I was like, wondering yes. about the bottom um, in the bottom area where there's like the dashed lines. Um, yeah, like I said, that's just the, the software not consistently yes, yes. applying the wall. Of course, of course. I was just curious about it because there was like some green space there, so and it didn't look um, like an obvious road. So I don't know if that was prime for sneaking. Although, uh, if you said this is a gate, we could uh, sneak there. Well, yeah, but I was gonna say instead of head straight for the main gate, uh, we could cut through the field. I wish these were wiki things were a little smaller uh, to go up, investigate this farmstead before hitting the side gate to see if that's available. You mean Is you don't this? like big old massive ping? Uh, it's a little <laughs> distracting, but um, yeah, if the city, since the city got invaded, and it seems to be a occupying force, then the main gates are probably going to be guarded. That's a fair assessment. We're not exactly a large force as it is, so coming through a main gate probably wouldn't make a lot of sense. We have five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, what, what are your guys' thoughts on approach? I like that approach of investigating the farmstead. That makes sense. And mm -hmm. that's side gate that's connected potentially to that small road right there. So I'm in agreement. <laughs> Same here, actually. Likewise. All right. All right. Well, if that's the plan for tomorrow, um, do you think we should do any kind of bordering up 
here before bedding down, since apparently they're still roaming zombie hordes. A box. Don't don't do the measure. Oh dear. That is massive. That's what she said. Oh, oh sorry. Wow. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't yeah. quite have this set to scale. No worries. It's a beautiful map. I love it very much. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it, it almost looks like a like a real a city map. Almost like, yeah, almost like an actual, like, sky view, yeah. It is giving CAD design, for real. Yes, yes, yes. Um, (laughs) So, yes. Um, So, Zach, your your question was, um, Zabcorn, uh, was to, are we boarding up where we're staying to protect ourselves? Yeah, since there's a lot of survivors still here. here. Yeah, if there's anything we could do to fortify, but we definitely should also get full rest. Absolutely. What should we do to begin? Oh, wise one. <laughs> well, I mean, put a wise in one. Of, put some front doors and making sure all the windows are closed would be a nice, at least nice step. But do we know if all the people that we survived are going to stay here or are they going to leave? I mean, to... they're not about to head out in the middle of the night at the very least. Yeah, but are like, they going to make this their new home until they learn like they're given an all clear? It varies or... from person to person. It looks like most of them are content to sit tight to sort of hunker down here. Um, and like knowing that this is a defensible position, knowing that like, you know, they're ready for stuff that might happen instead of uh because last time they're all just jumped and surprised yeah but uh yeah it looks like most of them are planning on sort of just defending themselves here but there are others that are like no i need to get out there i need to find my family i need to do this um they seem to be in the minority of those that are leaving, are any of them wanting to head back to the main town? Doesn't even if seem... they're not com- okay. Those that want to even... like head to the main town, they seem aware that like that is just presently not feasible. Okay. Because I wasn't, I wasn't trying to ask any of them. Hey, you guys want to go fight zombies? But extra eyes and hands are always useful for when we're doing stuff. But um, so yeah, uh, I guess just basic securing of the building before uh, people go to sleep. I guess. Yeah, you guys can set up like uh, the what's it called? Like set up the tables uh, as like barricades and stuff like that. And I think oh, while they do that, Oliver probably gets a hold of like tests a little bit and maybe some other individuals who may seem like they may take more charge of certain situations, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he, he wants to help them formulate plans for the inevitability that, you know, such individuals return. If, if, if let's say, you know, someone such as uh, what's her name? Da-da-da-da, album, the butcher. Uh, you know, comes back or other individuals. That way they have like plans of of execution of how to, you know, get out back doors so that no one's seen, make it look like no one's there. If that's what their plan is, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Have we asked this guy if like, uh, what do you call it? His army that he's part of, if they come through here regularly, if they make stops here or if them coming here was just a one-time thing. Uh, so he is part of their, uh, they're just called the Butcher's Boys, um, and he and his, uh, companions, they were sort of, uh, told to keep watch here, just in case, like, anybody stopped by and needed to refuel, recharge, anything like that, um, okay. but, uh, they, it's not like, they're not regularly scheduled to receive people. Okay, so they're 
they were just here for a if someone shows up. Yep. All right, so no one should be coming around here to uh, <clears throat> check on them, supposedly, but I mean... Unless no, but designated <laughs> eyes could never hurt. Yeah, unless this dude's going to be like, still be a dick and like start killing people in their sleep. <laughs> I don't jinx it. Tress is not <laughs> planning on on uh, untying him while people are asleep. <laughs> but uh, um, my old man brain can't think of anything else. Uh... <laughs> There, there. Well, after we four to five, definitely doing. So, um, Aurora definitely helped move some tables to the doors and in windows, things like that. And when we were done, definitely some meditation, <laughs> rest, so she can be her full self on the next day. Okay. Yes. Sleep. All right, so you guys probably get uh, the best sleep you've had in a while. Um, all the beds are down to the south here. Um, and sure. it's not that you haven't slept in a bed, because when you stopped at uh, the Stein household, the Stein farm said you did get a chance to sleep. It is merely the fact that uh, there aren't any children you murdered. Uh, within like five feet of where you're resting your head. Bull children. It's yeah. Oh, I can't see. Who am I kidding? It is dark down here, yes. Yeah, yeah it is dark. <laughs> but uh, you guys have a good night's sleep. Um, there's other people like keeping watch and stuff. And so you are able to rest and wake up the next day refreshed most refresh you felt in probably a little bit. And ready to face whatever it is you wish to do. <laughs> Alrighty. Gentry uh, spends some of his time uh, creating more arrowheads. Working, uh, making some arrows and stuff like that to restock his collection. Let's see. Any wood that he doesn't use, uh, Harry will probably make use of and whittle little tiny trinkets. But other than that, okay. not really much else. And just to remind you guys, while I do run uh, Gentry typically, he does have stuff that you can ask him to use, like call out whenever you want him to use it. He does have shining ammunition as well as an antler arrow. Very nice. Gotcha, can, gotcha. Can one use javelins if he runs out of arrows? Uh, that probably sounds nuts, but like uh, he runs not, out of not with his bow, but he can okay. try to throw a javelin. Okay. A poor string on his bow as he launches a javelin. Like a monster <laughs> hunter bow. Yeah, that's what that would be. Nice. All right. So you guys set out. Journeying. Um, it is a nice autumnal day. The It's a little brisk, um, but the sun is out. It is starting to warm up by the time you leave. And so you guys are heading. Let me switch. Not just over. constant rain right now? The rain seems to have broken, at least for a time. <gasps> Ooh. It's a first. So you guys are traveling uh, westward. Do the zombies act different in the farm areas because this, it's not raining? Like, no, and actually, they... as you travel, you do see, like you've seen in the past, uh, zombies working the fields. Yes. They're diligent zombies. They are. <laughs> They're earning that paycheck. Mm -hmm. 
but they're not like sunburning, right? Like that's what I was wondering. Uh, <laughs> no, no, okay. they are not. <laughs> All right. They seem fine, at least in that regard. <laughs> they so. need no PPE. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not a bit. And so, what are you guys doing as you move? Like, what are what sort of exploration activities? Because, as we can show the stream, if you haven't seen this in a in uh. Boundary yet, there is now a party sheet, which like compiles people's information. It's very cool. Ah, oh, it's so nice. But uh, yeah, there's like you can. It gives the parties general travel speed. Uh, if they have any exploration activities, they can use stuff of that nature. Uh, so, yep, everybody's dragging Oliver down to their level, making it so that <laughs> unless he wants to leave a party behind, he's going only 25 feet. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? We mean drag? What did I do? <laughs> yep, they're dragging you down to their level. Uh, but yeah, uh, I want everyone else to use hustle for their exploration while I just know <laughs> uh, the old man's not hustling. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, I you know how to hustle doing... like the best of them. <laughs> I will be doing detect magic since it says that's an exploration option. OK, yeah. Certainly constantly keeping an eye out for anything uh, funky. OK. Uh, I'll have defend, and I'll I'll put that up here in a minute. Okay. You got your shield at the ready. I'll be glad to sit up front, as the usual. Okay, so um, Oliver's leading the way. Uh, All right. I would like to do something similar. Um, maybe shield in the rear or something like that. Okay. Um, but. Are you guys physically adding the activity to that party sheet there? I'm trying to, but it's not really right. Me. So uh, what I'm doing is uh, when you click on like the exploration activity yes. uh, for the, like, the slot available, it opens up the exploration section yes. in your character sheet, and then you have oh. to put those activities in your sheet. Yep, you do the browse. And then, and then you, you can just click oh, active okay, from right. there. Yeah, so you drag it to your sheet so you can choose to then use it. Yeah, just like that. What is this cleanse soul path? That sounds fun. <laughs> I don't know what that's from. <laughs> that ah, I'm gonna like I'm gonna add in that to my sheet. Hold on. No, it's, from the, it's from the secrets of magic. <laughs> oh yeah, it's for the soul forger dedication. Mm -hmm. it's fun. That feels uh, champion-y. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Decaf, what about Silas? What is Silas uh, doing? Cover uh, tracks. Silas okay. is always bringing up the rear to cover our tracks. Yep. Okay. So then, is the party order looking like... Because uh, Oliver said he's in the lead. So is it going to be like Oliver, yes. Harry, Aurora, so that way she can defend people as needed, and then Silas in the back? I think that sounds fine. Yeah, that's good. Right. Yeah. Also, I did not mean to put detect magic. I don't think that's in my skill set yet. <laughs> not really, no. no. Um, Silas, <laughs> do you want to give me a secret survival check? Or actually, sure. this is not secret. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, wait, it says you don't need oh. to attempt a check, but anybody tracking you must succeed a survival check against your survival DC. Very cool. Ah, there we go. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, fair enough. All right, nice. Okay, so you advance cautiously through the farmlands. And in the distance, you can see uh, figures working the fields. And some of them move with the clunky, laborious motions of the undead. But others move much easier, more swiftly. And as you get closer to this farm, you notice that the population of field workers, and it's sometimes difficult to make out which is which, um, but the population goes more. There's a, it's, you see more figures working the field, and you get the feeling that approaching this, this farmstead 
is not going to be possible uh, while escaping the attention of these figures, unless you guys mm. can stealth in. I would love to stealth check if you'd like. Let's see. I can uh, do, do we feel like that'll be a, a possible... How many again? Uh, It ranges, but it's just like... The closest to you right now is you notice a a cart uh, that a horse seems to be hitched to, as well as two figures loading it. Uh, I am trained in stealth, so I can at least Me attempt too. to be quiet. Same. Uh, so, can all of us do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Silas, you have stealth. <laughs> I'm trained in it. We want to give that a shot then? Uh, yeah, I re- already rolled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it, Harry's was much better than mine. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> Still a little jingle jangle. Oh my. <laughs> Hopefully they're blind. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty right. twenty. Well, let's go ahead and accept reality. <laughs> Rolling for initiative? <laughs> oh no, I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I will add you guys here real quick based on the order that you told me you were traveling in. If you want to spread yourself out a little bit, uh, maybe you're moving in a staggered formation, feel free to do so. But you're coming up through the fields, and you are trying to move um, sort of along like these these fields are sloping, and you're trying to move along the road, but unfortunately you have attracted the attention of the workers. And so... Uh. <laughs> Those zombie and workers... Raise my shield now. Right. <laughs> so, well, it's because, you know, we've got the defend going, so I might as yeah. well. If yeah. you guys would like, you can attempt uh, stealth for initiative. Okay. How, I'll ooh. do it. I'll just... What? <laughs> I will happily default to perception. And uh, I'll take an overall plus nine, please. Thanks. And you guys do have... Um, what was I about to say? Uh, Oliver, you succeeded, so you'll be starting this combat at least hidden. Ooh. That's good. How uh, does... What, what... The rest How of do you... I use that to my advantage? <laughs> I don't Ooh, know. Buddy. Okay. How, you're saying one kid either use perception or stealth. Stealth. Yep. Yep. Eh. It's the same, so... <laughs> well, uh, Where unusual. was this energy when we were stealthing? <laughs> I have my keen ears. My plus two. And, and then, if we were doing the defend, we can, we can raise oh, our shield. Or... Start with your shield raised. Okay. I'd have to drag it on... Ooh, okay. This, this is oh tricky. man, I rolled poorly. No, the people that were using the defend exploration activity. Okay. Yes. And so, man. Do I click the effect? How do I? I drag it this on. This is me. gonna. Yikes. You'll be fine. Uh, so yeah, there's the razor shield. You can just drag the effect onto yourself. Yes, that was a uh, shadow river. It's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Okay. Yeah, so do excuse us, folks. We are getting back into the swing of things, refreshing yeah. ourselves on the use of Foundry. This was also always an issue, so we're, we're, we're working on it. And uh, <laughs> while, while we are doing that, um, and we still need a roar to roll for initiative, but I will show you guys. Oh, I, uh, did, I did. It was a 16. Oh, on the, if you roll on the encounter Click. tracker. Oh, I rolled a perception check. Not a, okay, well... <laughs> Uh, so, as you guys draw closer, um, the horse rears up, but no sounds emerge from it aside from the clacking of bones, as you realize it is a fleshless beast. 
That's pretty cool. It is currently tethered to a cart, uh, but its companions are not so bound. Of course. So that are those are the other two. <laughs> that gives like a different meaning to American Gothic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too bad I couldn't keep that perception check. That would have helped me. Yep. Unfortunately, that is not the case as we begin the encounter. The horse is the first to act. Some fell magic allows it to catch maybe your scent, maybe just the fact that you are alive. It can sniff upon the air. And at your approach, it becomes agitated bucking and kicking, and tearing itself a wee free from the cart, uh, upending it and sending gathered grains and other goods scattering across the ground. That is one of its actions. It turns, and if it was able to, you are certain that it would snort at you. But instead... It is going to thunder forward, carrying surprising weight on uh, on a flesh on its fleshless form. Okay, so it can get there with one action. Oop. Aurora has raised a shield twice, and then it will close. Let's go. Yeah, let's get rid of one of those. <laughs> so with its third action, it closes in on Oliver. Suddenly finding a rabbit. <laughs> yep. It rears up, Hello. and again, you would think, like, you could almost imagine this horse uh, neighing, like, braying at you. But as a skeleton, it makes no noise, aside from those of its bones uh, coming together. Silas, it is your turn. Cool. I don't like that this thing is closing in on us. Uh, I Galloping will... at you, kicking up dust as it races towards you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I guess, step off the path here. Okay. That is just a step. And then I am going to then uh, target the horse with... Uh, it's actually not in here, funny enough. Um, so instead of Vitality Slash, I shall do Disrupt Undead. Okay. It will it's attempt... because literally just the name changed. <laughs> yeah, it'll attempt a Fortitude save. Sweet. Ooh, fails. Heavy fail there. Ooh. Almost a critical fail. Ooh. I For accept seven it. seven points of positive damage. Okay. You reach yeah, out with uh, with energies of life and send them in a surge through this creature. And some of its bones, like spiderweb thin cracks, begin to spread alongside them. But uh, it is still very much together. The first shambler, Shem, will stride. And then for his second and final action, he will stride. Oliver, it is your turn. Alrighty, am I still hidden at this point in time? I kind of uh, doubt it. Not from the horse, at least. Yeah, well, and if I were to move, I would then not be hidden from there. Right. So, cool. Makes my life nice and easy for what I choose to do. I will... Do the usual, I shall enter the stance. Okay. So, boink. Wah. All right, one action and then... drop into a almost predatory stance, which is an odd look for a tiny rabbit person. <laughs> Menace. Uh, and then I will follow that up with another raised shield okay Just keep that going and so then final action to stance, do... you remember your defense as well 
And then I will follow it up lastly with a flurry of blows for a single action with two strikes. Okay. You Strike number out. one. This will be at the skeletal horse thing. Okay. Let's see it. Bring it. Hey-ya! Nope. Oh, wait. I got, forget I got to press it twice. <laughs> All right. 22, a successful hit. And as for this one. Ooh, another Ooh. hit. I think that is the first time you've ever hit with both attacks from Flurry. I'm going to be honest, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so these will combine for the purposes of any reductions. Yeah. And or res uh, uh, weaknesses. Yep. Resistances and weaknesses. So seven. So ten total. And it is a good thing that they do combine because you realize as you strike this thing, uh, its bones are somewhat resilient to slashing damage. I see. So I have taken the damage uh, I just because I had to do some adjustments and we couldn't just combine those naturally. So that is your turn. Uh, Oliver will just quickly call out, cutting it doesn't seem to be the route. Try something else. Right. Shouts out advice to his allies as the final shambler closes in. And hopefully, well, I mean, hopefully the final shambler, because uh, if it's not, it might be in trouble. It moves forward, striding, almost stumbling through the field. Harry, it is your turn. All right. Uh, Harry's first action will Fireball. be to <laughs> yeah, will be to get out of the way of this stampeding zombie horse. So he's gonna hobble over this the stone wall. Uh, yeah, it's a small stone wall, wall, mainly just to like mark the presence of the field there. Alrighty, and using his uh, Jedi powers, he will fling a loose stone from the wall at the big horse. Okay. With TK. TKP. Natural 20. Oh, oh my, my gosh. So, just to remind you, uh, we are playing with critical hit cards, so if you go over to the rollable tables. Rollable card stacks. No. Rollable. Okay. Critical. There's a critical hit deck. And Hello. all you need to do is yep if you scroll down, you hit there's a there's a roll button at the bo bottom of it oh okay and number so five we'll hit number five spell normal damage okay so instead yeah. of doing that i will let you choose you guys can always say like i don't want to do what my, what my card says can i just deal double damage instead yeah I'll do double I'm, damage. I'm I fine with that. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be casting any spell. But you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Plot twist. It, it, this could be, fire this could be the skeleton of Mr. Ed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's All see. Right, so go ahead and deal your damage. And it will take double that because it is a crit. So you seize a, a rock from this nearby wall and send it hurtling and it smashes into this creature's fate, shattering half of its skull. But it is still standing and turns to fix you with a baleful glare. Is that a reaction? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it doesn't do anything, but that is its reaction. <laughs> Aurora, it is your turn. Yes. And, um, all right. So shield is up. Um, yep, it does kind of go down. It does, unfortunately, go down at the end of your turn. You'll have to raise it again if you want its benefit. Makes sense. Uh, my question is, was my Warhammer out? If not, I can uh, say the first action is we I, took it out. I am willing to say that wandering through here, you might have your Warhammer out. I would prefer in the future that if that is your intent, you call it out. But yes. we've, we've been gone for a while, and you guys are wandering through dangerous territory, so I'm willing to accept that you have it in hand. 
Yep, no, just checking in because it was actually on my sheet already up. So I was willing, if we needed to, to spend an action. Gotcha. Um, you know, uh, are you the only person in this party that actually uses a weapon? Probably. She is. <laughs> I just kind of realized exactly that. That is exactly correct. That is you... exactly that. Yep. <laughs> Don't worry, so... there's a game uh, that I am in as a player that has nobody that uses any weapons. Uh-huh. And our poor GM's like, I want to give you guys magic weapons. I'm like, we don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so, sorry. I should have clarified. First action. Um, should I... F- what? Mm, do I get the gap glass or these rocks here to, like, help Oliver here? So if you want to try to get into a flank, you would need to get to this square here. Mm-hmm. And is my movement up to twenty four? Let me let me tr- let me check that first. If it's not, then I will step back. You, you um, can't go. You can't go through the horse like that. Yep, yeah. I was trying to go sideways. Uh, so undo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you if, were right. If you do yes. a space yep. in your while you're, while you're measuring out, when you hit space, Press it space. changes. Okay. Uh, how you're and you can add additional points. Space. And then... Yep. Space. All right. So it take you. It looks like it, it would take, take you, two, you actions. two actions to get to there. Oh, then I. I just wanted one action. That's what I wanted to check. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no. All good. So can I go back? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. You wanted you could get to as far as here with twenty five. Yes, okay. you could get like yeah, like you said, right there with one action, not a flank, but or you could just uh, move up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Now, second action, war hammer. She's out. She's ready. Bring it. Uh, Show me what you, you sh- got. <laughs> Ooh, hey, you got yeah, nothing one. good. Now, remember, yeah. you guys all have a hero point. And we may need to... Oh, so, if you, like, to... do you want to use it here? Oh, and we have crit cards, if not... Yes, we do. We got the critical fumble we have... cards. <laughs> to go with we the have critical the critical hit, hit cards. and fumble, yep. You know what? Let me just critical fumble. I'm going to critical Ooh. fumble. <laughs> you know what? I, I like it. I like it. Give, give yourself a hero point. Oh, that's so nice. But yes, uh, I'm going to go, <laughs> well. then, and then die. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. F- well, don't jinx it. <laughs> so go to the rollable tables, yes. select the critical fumble deck, scroll down, yes. and hit the roll oh, button. Oh boy, yeah. Let's roll. And then I'll add that hero point after. Yep. All right, we got critical fumble nine. Number what do we have? Nine. <laughs> Love potion number nine. Attack the darkness. <laughs> so I imagine you sort of like, as you're swinging, as you're rearing back, you accidentally look at the sun yes. and are briefly blinded, uh, yes. making enemies concealed from you until the end of your next turn. Sounds good. I can't see. So, yep. Um, how do I add that um, condition on you? Or you know what? Uh, that is roughly the dazzled condition, so I can add okay. that to you real quick. Sounds good. Yay, I am dazzled. This you horse have, is so beautiful. <laughs> you have one action <laughs> remaining. So then I raise my shield. So. Okay, that sounds okay, like that. a plan. Well, that brings us to round two and back to the skeletal horse. Uh-oh, oh. I'm blinded. Yep, uh, you didn't produce time earlier, did you? <laughs> or forward time earlier, did you? Oh, I did not. All right, so we are, let's put it a few hours. We'll say this is, yeah, around 10, 9.58. You guys got a nice early start for the day. I'm okay with this. I'm glad we figured out what that issue was from last time. <laughs> when none of us just understood anything. It was so confusing. <laughs> So after getting yeah. after getting rocked, um, skeletal horse is going to advance upon the perpetrator. 
Oh, oh dang it. I tried. <laughs> Screw you, he says, as he gallops away. Um, <laughs> and he's actually going to try to sort of barrel in to you. So he is like sort of almost like he he lowers his head almost like a bull and like tosses it into you. And he's going to try to trip you, to shove you over. So this is going to be an athletics check against your reflex DC. All right. And that's just 10 plus the thing. Oh, and that's probably going to fail because that's only an 11. Um, I have a plus 5 reflex. So it would be DC 15. That is indeed a failure. Okay. You managed to, despite your age, you spryly leap out of the way and realize Gentry's not with the party. Yeah, I was going to bring that up, but I was going to wait till after <laughs> the combat. Uh, Gentry is doing some scouting for you guys elsewhere. We'll, we'll join you shortly once this combat's done. Uh, then <laughs> it is going to rear up once its first attempt misses and try to hit you in the temple with a hoof. Oh boy. Wow. There is a natural one for my oh, horse. The sound. <laughs> wow, that's just lovely for that one. The salt yes, from the I horn. Yes, so I did, I did take um, a sort of triumphant sound for when I rolled critical fumbles and a bad sound for when I rolled critical hits since I am rolling <laughs> I the enemies the for you guys. guys. Yes. That's funny. I am the bad guys. Uh, so let's roll on this table. Number 33. You drop one item you are holding, determined randomly by the GM. He drops his patella. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't All want right. to go with not my pony? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did get that one that did have my attention. You get the nearest animal companion mount or familiar. Hmm, he maybe. hits one of the zombies. That they're his <laughs> animal companions. <laughs> Silas, that means we've gotten back to you, and I have done nothing to this party so far. Ooh, okay. Actually, um, if I may. Oh, oh, if you may. Okay. Would it have been considered a melee weapon, or was it unarmed? Oh, you're right. It is unarmed. What is unarmed? Oh, he is stunned one. Oh, you know what? That fits. It's a bad headbutt. He tried to, like, headbutt and toss him aside. And, I don't know, maybe, um... Yeah. Dislodged, Harryman. like, the head, <laughs> head yeah. skull on the neck for a little bit, yeah. Harryman, like, brought his cane up maybe to defend himself and cause the skull to spin around on the on the, uh, on the neck. It, the head's now, like, facing completely backwards on this horse's body. He's getting a lot of concussions. Yes. I love it. <laughs> But uh, you know what? It's it's better than his racehorse days. <laughs> Where did everyone go? It's actually how he died. Um, <laughs> Silas. All right. Uh, well, we're starting to separate a little bit, so hey. I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna look at both of the shamblers. Hey. I'm gonna cast another. Uh, new cantrip that I just prepare. <laughs> I swap one cantrip every day, just so we're clear. Uh, and <laughs> okay. Today, I went from Scatter Spree to Slashing Gust. Ooh. Hmm. So I'm going to make one attack roll against both of their ACs. Let's see each target's AC. Let's see how that goes. Because, yeah, you aren't wielding anything. Yep. Oh, oh that was targeting the uh, skeletal horse. Oh, that was good. Hmm. Well, give it, you do, uh, okay, there's that, and then two, uh, I'm just going to safely assume a seven is going to miss. I'll spend my hero point because yep. I want to see if I can't hit both of these guys at once. Okay, okay. Because it just seems like it'd be fun. We roll using hero point. 16 is Again. a... That's for some reason still targeting the horse, it says. Uh, yeah, that's weird, because I do I have think, the, the yeah. target on the shambler. <laughs> I but think it, because that is the initial roll was to the horse that it probably just redid Re the horse even though it retargeted. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, that is a hit against a zombie. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Uh, all right. So that should do to both of them. His hands are free, so two attacks. Damage. Six. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm saying, let's see. Make a spell attacks roll against each target's AC. Yeah, I guess you only roll once there, huh? 
Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So you uh, send out scything winds that bite into rotted flesh. Under his breath, Silas is like, I am the windmill. (laughs) (laughs) The grain must be cut down. Um, (laughs) You have, I think, one action remaining. Yep, and then for my final action, I am then, uh, in case the ire is upon me, I am going to throw up a glass shield. Okay. Well, that brings us to the first zombie shambler. And I'm not sure this mindless creature has enough sense to know who hit it. So it's going to just step, and it's going to go for the first target available. Punches out with this fist. Hello. uh, The size of Oliver's head. Let me make sure I am targeting your Polly Oliver. <laughs> oh boy! No way! No Bro. shot! Uh, the <laughs> Let's go! So beautiful. Do you guys want to switch to roll twenty? <laughs> It'll be one of them. Yeah, yeah with your rolls, absolutely please. not. <laughs> I know your rolls. <laughs> I will cry. <laughs> All right. Well, this was another unarmed attack. That tastes awful. If this was a Jaws <laughs> attack or similar, I am sick in three. If it was not, I did say it was his fist. So, he Fair swings enough. and just punches dirt. And that is all two of his actions, meaning it is Oliver's turn. Uh, I think Oliver will just quickly call out um, as, as his turn begins. Uh, Aurora, if you want to try and handle the horse, you seem a little more equipped than I. Uh, as he tries to get the the swing out on these two zombos, if you will. Sure. Bring um. It. Actually, I won't move. I just realized that's maybe not a good idea. Not yet. Okay. I will strike out at this one first with a flurry of blows. All right. Number one. Mm, hit him. I uh, that's frick. Uh, no, you're still I missed hurting anyways. the horse, but that is a miss anyway. Yep, that is. Yep, <laughs> I will switch it. <laughs> and skadoosh. That is oh, that was almost a one. Also a miss. <laughs> that was a little close. <laughs> so two swipes um, against this creature, and maybe you know you were thrown off by its just wild swing straight into the dirt yeah yeah it's as you swipe out you know you're sort of expecting to meet it maybe even parry its blow as you land your own but instead it's just swing goes wide by a mile and you're just left slashing out air um since they seem like they're more focused on the nearest target right Uh uh-huh oliver is gonna go ahead now he'll move he's gonna move to here okay and he's going to kind of try and keep its attention as he goes, calling out to it, and then raise his shield again. Yeah, these uh, these sort of milky white eyes follow you as its jaw hangs open. Leading to our next shambler's turn. This shambler will shamble forth, and it will also yes. make a fist strike against Aurora Boral. This is valid. This is valid. Oh, here comes a giant fist. <laughs> no. And an 18 oh. is a miss because, because of, of the shield. shield. Nice. It Good swings play. at you and you snap your shield into place, warding off this blow, Oof. causing it to <laughs> stumble back slightly. Harry, you have earned the ire of my skeletal horse trap. <laughs> uh... I will. My clever snare. I will continue to try to run away from it. A stampeding horse is a scary thing. And I will attempt again to bash it with another rock. All right. Like Killer Croc in that one episode of Batman. You throw a rock at him, but miss. Even with its head turned backwards. Your blow cannot find its mark. 
leading to Aurora's turn. Oh, oh that was so close. That was so close to me. Um, <laughs> Aurora is... Oh, well, now that works. Okay, well... <laughs> Uh, so Step up to the she's... horse. Step yeah. up to the plate. Yes. You would be willing now... to hear me out? Yes. And you step slightly further. Where? Just further south, just a little. Well, she could stride there. Or stride, sorry. <laughs> okay. Horse did, I, I... Yeah, I could keep moving. Um... And now I'm targeting myself. Listen, yep. how are you doing this now? <laughs> make sure, make sure you've got uh, the select token thing selected for your. Uh... Yes, for myself. Yep. Yep. To target, target. Come on, target the horse. All right. And then. So, did you want to move <laughs> another square down for Oliver's request? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, is it where? Is it here? You want me here? Uh, just like a further square south down oh here 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 yeah 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 all right cool moved targeted now i'm swinging with a disadvantage because i'm dazzled or uh so when you swing mm -hmm. it should you're you need to make a flat check and i haven't actually interacted with this on foundry so it might mm -hmm. do it automatically for you mm -hmm. so go ahead and try to attack and we'll see what happens here we'll see what happens all right so. I was close. But... Okay. So, uh, it did not take Dazzled into consideration. So what I need you to do is I actually need mm -hmm. you to roll a d20. Yes, I can roll a d20. Not a problem. We roll it. see what happens. Oh, it was Unfortunately, so close. yeah, the light... You're still blinking, you know, these splotches of black and, uh, like, other shifting colors from your vision. And you think you see the horse, you think you've got it lined up, and you swing. And in its dodging of the stone hurled by Harry, it also manages to duck under your blow. Sounds good. You have one action remaining. You want to try for another swing? Go for the shield? All right. Sounds good. Shield up. Shield is up. Because I can't see. <laughs> well, that brings us back around to the horse who only has two actions this turn. So rather than Ooh. waste a waste an action uh, chasing after Harry, you see its, its head like spins and clicks back into place. Yes, super and it's fun. Fixes on uh, its gaze fixes on Aurora and it turns and will strike out with a hoof against her, maybe landing the first blow of the encounter for my creatures. Maybe. Mocking me incessantly in failure. <laughs> uh, no. It'll go for another so strike. Close. <laughs> so close. Oh, we. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your shields. Shields no longer work. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> the horse just. The, the rules of the world have changed. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. No <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh, boy. Listen. Right. This... Honestly, armor shouldn't shouldn't make you harder to hit. It should ab absorb damage for you. I think there might be varying Kinda. rules for that. There was in first edition. I can't remember if there is in second edition. Let's go really? for another roll on the critical fumble table. Oof. 21. Coming at you like Cleopatra is <laughs> tripped. I <laughs> dumb horse it's falls into a pile of bones. Bone it crumples. Listen. Silence. I know. Put I know something out of its misery. Please, I beg of you. <laughs> Feel for you right now, because I'm rolling pretty much the same, though. Also, I do need to make a quick adjustment to the shamblers, because I forgot to do something. Oh, it's just, it's just beautiful. Okay, let me get rid of my uh, expired glass shield now. Yeah. Your slashing uh, and gust then... seemed very effective against the, the zombies. Ooh, okay. Then, honestly, I'm going to just double down on that. We're going to hope for sure. another another swing and hit. 
Okay. Uh, all right, I am targeting a Shambler, so hopefully this actually goes correctly. Yeah. So we'll cast Slashing Gust. We're going to hit the attack roll. We're going to roll. 16, that see... is another hit. Yes, okay. Blades of Wind and then... fly from you. So you stir them into action. Love it. And that is exactly enough. This should have been at 9. With their weakness, that is exactly enough to kill both zombies. Holy crap, that's awesome. All right. Uh, I will have to. I got actually... nothing else. I'll just <laughs> read glass shield myself. All right. Well, I can remove them from the combat order. And it is Oliver's turn. I imagine right then, like, Oliver was ready for them to start coming his way, and he was going to do, like, another spinning kick slice, and then, like, they both just fell, and he went, oh. Well, that's convenient. You come, o- you come over here and beat this dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he'll just come Zach, sliding like, on over. Go ahead and give yourself a hero <laughs> line for that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um... And I will do... Let me double check something. Stance. And can make. Okay, so I can still make normal punches yep. and stuff. So I will do exactly that. I will make uh, a flurry of blows unarmed. Just okay. normal strikes for bludgeoning. All right, sounds good. Let's see it. Uh, target. And we Spin! That is a hit. It is almost a crit. Spin! Uh, that is a hit because of off guard. Oh. Let's go! Alright, so eight uh, total eight damage. Eight bludgeoning. Will my horse survive eight bludgeoning damage? Find out on the next scene of me clicking this button. It did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one action remains to Oliver. Oh, yeah, I guess it was prone anyways. Yep. It's off guard regardless. <laughs> uh, and I'll try. Should I try again? You want to just style on that horse? Try, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Nope. <laughs> that, unfortunately, with even with flat-footed, that is going to be a miss. Leaving it up to Harry. Uh, Harry, Harry will, will keep casting stones as he throws another rock at this thing. All right. This is so great. Ooh, Ooh that is a miss, Harry. My eyes are giving out. <laughs> my back! <laughs> but um, for my final action, I will attempt a perception check to see if since this thing should be... Uh, close to dead, re-dead. Uh, I'm going to do a you... perception check to see if anything else is coming our way. Uh, okay. That is fair. You do have three points, by the way, if you end up curious. Yeah, do if I... you just want to spend a hero point. Uh, that'd be fun. <laughs> Alright, yeah, go ahead. So you look around. Uh, make that secret in the future. Um, oh, my bad. No, all good. But no, it seems you guys are carrying out this battle fairly swiftly. Um, Like, the zombies didn't even get a chance to land a blow. Uh, It doesn't look like you've attracted any attention yet. Aurora. It is your turn. The dazzled. It is gone. It is gone. (laughs) It went away at it the end gone. of your last turn. Yay! So, here we go. <laughs> We're gonna swing in this thing. Um, you got the flank. 17 is a hit. Why? <laughs> Alright. Um, and we will grow. Oh, I did not mean to double click that. Oh, ah, good. Sorry. Uh, please right. describe how you dispatch my. Poor, poor dead horse. So, was the horse still prone? Yep. So, 
Aurora basically brings the hammer down like it's one of those uh, games at the carnival where you hit it and then the <laughs> bell goes like ding! Like she did like that move and that took Kamosa. It shatters under the weight of your blow. And my clever horse and zombie snare is thwarted by my players. We have fun. <laughs> All right, good job. Nicely done. So, Ooh. with these foes thwarted, the farmhouses are only a few hundred feet away or so. You feel like you could get to them. Though may want to move swiftly, just in case Harry missed somebody approaching you guys. Um. Well, actually, now that combat is over, yeah. Um. I noticed. Don't want to move or anything. Let me know. And those. Uh, my buddy isn't here, so I kind of look around for him. Uh, Gentry pops out of the tree. Sorry, I was trying to get into an advantageous position. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Good job. Good job. But uh, we seem to be in the clear. Ain't sure for how much longer. We might want to get up to them farmhouses if that's the plan. Like, yeah, we did make some noise, so we should probably hurry up and Deep. start hobbling along. Come on, old timer, let's go. Uh, so <laughs> you guys move you back Are we out. worried about hiding any of our what, the activity? Body? Yeah, just hiding them in the field at least a little bit. Of... Uh, I don't want to touch zombie body. <laughs> also that. It's fair. Fair enough. I, mean, I feel like that sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, one by one, we'll pick up the bone from the horse and just one by one throw a bone. <laughs> All of them are gone. <laughs> Am I able to like roll for perception? Or... Yeah. Uh, make it a secret oh, check. Dang it! It was supposed to be secret. All <laughs> right, you see nothing. I, I clicked too fast, and I was like, "It's supposed to be secret." You notice nothing. And you don't know if that's because you rolled poorly or because I'm not going to let you notice anything because it wasn't a secret check. That's <laughs> one, that, two. <laughs> I think I'm safe, so... Yep. <laughs> I will stick with my defend exploration as we move. Okay. So you guys make it to uh, the farmstead without further incident, but find the place <laughs> ransacked. The you find there's there are several like you know um, there's stables there are there's like a barn like for the animals and everything like that and it is either vacant in certain cases some of the one, some of the ones you find or the animals have been slaughtered like you you find like the bloods and remains um, the those of you, well, pretty much all of you, those of you from the area, recognize uh, teeth marks in the flesh of, like, a half-eaten, like, cow or something. Hmm. How old? Know. How old? Uh, yeah, if I were to use, you... like, medicine. Yeah, yeah, give me a medicine check. Do you want this to be secret or anything like that? No, you can you can roll it out in the open. I've adjusted the color of my dice. I'm already upset that I did. You're <laughs> not sure. It is... What was survival? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the bodies are certainly not fresh. The blood isn't like... It doesn't have that arterial red uh, to suggest it would be. But you're not sure. And like, just with everything like the just necromancy that permeates the air maybe that's hastening decomposition maybe that's slowing it it's very difficult for you to tell and besides the half-eaten animals are there any people walking around are there any zombies there are, there are signs of violence but there's nobody currently here hmm 
Okay. Any weapons? <laughs> you find yes, maybe like improvised weapons? Yeah, exactly. Like a pitchfork. Um, give me a... Somebody give me a perception check. This can be out in the open. Sure. Searching for stuff. Yeah, um, you guys are also able to find a scythe. Ooh. Ooh. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone in need of a scythe? I don't. I, I'm more curious about the pitchfork, actually. <laughs> uh, well, just for your knowledge, scythes uh, have pretty deadly. Yeah, but I'm also, I, I have, I'm already, I'm not trying to weigh myself down. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it can make it can make a pretty cool walking stick. <laughs> or or Harry Harryman, yes. Harry just wanted, yeah. wants to carry a scythe that he cannot use professionally. Yeah. <laughs> Be fair, neither can Oliver. So yeah. <laughs> but um, if we don't, I guess if we don't find really anyone or anything, I guess we should move on. What's the timing? Is it night almost? Uh, it's it's maybe like thirty minutes since you guys uh, finished the encounter, which puts you. It's guys like ten thirty ish. Yeah. So it's oh. still pretty early in the day. Then we got time. Yeah, um, like we're we're searching and everything. That's um anything from here. It's maybe like hour walk uh to town. Especially with the oh. rate that you guys have been moving to make sure your tracks are covered. Well, I'm down. Okay. So you guys... Also, am I, is Pitchfork actually a weapon a person can have? <laughs> uh, it effectively just uses the same stats as a spear, but is not a spear. Okay. Well, guess... Be an improvised thing. Who yep. has... Who has a zero spear on her sheet, but now is up to, to one. <laughs> so it's like a spear. <laughs> okay. Oh. Another Just nice thing here is it tells me all like your your uh, perception DCs on the party oh, fun. sheet. Yep. But okay, so you guys want to head to the wall. So the wall is, as I have mentioned uh, in the past, at least at some point or another, is it's a wooden palisade, about 20 feet tall. Um, from this angle, you're not sure how thick, but there are uh, guard towers built alongside it. So as you approach the gate, you notice two guard towers uh, that sort of like overlook it. There is a sturdy, uh, well-built wooden door that is blocking the gate. Do we see anyone in the watchtowers? Give me a secret perception check. All right. So... Private... GM or blind GM? Uh, I believe it is blind GM. Because private is you and me. Okay. You do indeed see a figure populating each tower. Hmm. Uh, and this is before you get too close. You're not quite sure if they've even noticed you yet. But you take the time. And you see crouched among... Like just like behind the barrier, the sort of, the sort of like wall itself of the tower. Mm -hmm. On each one, there is a skull, uh, with sort of like ember glowing eyes, looking out, sort of scanning the uh, the approach here. And why why don't I take you guys to the map? Like, is that a flaming skeleton? <laughs> oh boy. 
avoid notice in about 14 different ways. You guys aren't necessarily <laughs> this close. Uh, it's just a smaller map, so this is where I have you. Okay. Um, but, Zach, you notice uh, the figure here. All right. And here. So one on each parapet. Yep. Um, we may have to try to find like a broken hole in the wall or maybe make a hole because there are things yeah. manning the gate. And I have an axe. So just throwing that out there quietly. Where would be secret gentry? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't think Gentry can do some Legolas double sniping action. So uh, <laughs> we might have I to. Have an X. <laughs> if, they're, if they're skeletons, they're probably a might uh, resistant to arrows as anyway. Um. Can I do some kind of recall knowledge to see if I remember if there's any part of the wall that was like had poor maintenance so it might be easy for us to either yeah, break through or you fail. have if you have I would say Westerville lore or a society check uh, da, 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 da. uh remind me airmore lore what one's that one airmore is the uh, county oh that's uh, right thank you yep because you've been you've been all over it in your uh, cartography gotcha, explorations gotcha. do you want this to be a private role nope nope this will be open okay Okay, you actually do remember. And you know what? This goes way back to your youth. You recall a place, a, a section of the wall that has a hidden, uh, like, sort of almost secret doorway. Uh, you don't know. The rumors was that a thieves guild had built it before ultimately abandoning Westerville because it just wasn't a lucrative place for a thieves guild um i will you maybe bring that up used it to sneak out to go cow tipping in your misbegotten <laughs> youth yeah <laughs> nice but yeah i will bring up an old hidey hole that me and some of my friends used to play in when we were younger and maybe no one has patched it up since then. Ooh, I'm down to try. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Better than here, at least. Okay. Onward and forward. So, it definitely takes some more time of the day. And it is definitely uh, past noon by the time you find Harriman's uh, secret spot. And so as you guys enter in, what I want from you are stealth checks. Alrighty. You got it. Secret stealth? Uh, no, these can be out in the open. Public it oh. is. What society still? <laughs> rolling. Much better. Wow. All oh. right. Yeah. Dang, I rolled the lowest. Color me impressed. You guys manage to creep in here without any issue. You move unseen. Uh, easing your way. Oh, actually, you know what? I should probably roll for Gentry. Gentry's got a... God, a actually, pretty decent stealth. Oh my. Mm. 
Um, but that doesn't help a very bad roll for the poor old man. Give, can I give Just... Gitru a hero point? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you guys would like to summon a hero point on Gentry, you certainly can. I'll, yeah. Uh, I can give him one since I have okay. multiple. You have three. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I'll take another crack at this here. Alright. Gentry, you know, maybe stumbles like trying to squeeze through. But Harry, you catch him. You offer him a hand. And you guys ease in. And you now find yourselves within the walls of Weskerville. Awesome. You're probably more down this way at this point. All right. Now, you remember, Zach, mm -hmm. your shop is, or hopefully, if it is still standing, is over here. And this sort of plaza. Okay. Or actually, sorry, no. This one. This one. I misspoke. Much further in, okay. Um, just as a general thought process, where is everyone, if, if for those who are located within, where were they initially stationed when, when this all occurred? So, like... Is is the maps shop in town in the same area? Is you guys, um, yeah, because uh, the map shop was in the same block where mm -hmm. there was uh, the. Um, sorry, Zach. What was your toy store? Uh, actually, I think I have it here in my notes. I believe it was, it was uh, Harry's like... Hopping Hovelties. Yeah. Uh, which was located right next to the local Dread, Wrath, and Be Gone, a local uh, weapon and armor shop. Love it. Yeah, and uh, the the uh, the maps were on the same place. We're on the same um, block. What of the rest of our, our companions? Uh, where, where were they located on average? Um, I think we were... You know, just wandering around for the the events of the fair. Yeah. This, I think we said it was the attack happened about right here. Yeah, when you guys... So this place exploded, and then you guys had to run from the zombie horde. And your run ended you over here, where you took shelter in the mayor's manor. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. that did not help, but we, we, it, it, we, we did something. It slowed it down for a bit. Then, uh, then the butcher got in. Do you guys want to check the like the mayor's place first, or do you guys want to swing by our houses and see if we can find more supplies? Well, my house is out in the farmland. <laughs> oh, I don't know where in said farmlands, but it's out there. Um, I'm curious if about where they're storing people. Um, I'm probably sure they're storing people near the windmills, but I wonder if there's like different places, different hostages are stored. It's a decently sized town. It might take multiple uh, large structures to like keep people captive. Right. Depending on how much they've de depopulated the place. Also that. What's the best way to proceed to find out first, maybe closest to where we entered, how to perceive or uh, where maybe they uh, start locking people up? Well, I will say, as you guys ease into the wall, mm -hmm. you step into a town that eerie silence is only broken by the groaning of undead, raucous almost violent laughter and cries of pain. Most of these sounds are distant, carried to you on dead winds. But occasionally, you will hear one of these noises closer to you, telling you that you probably don't want to stay in one place for too long, not without some sort of cover. Hmm. 
I guess maybe first thing to do is to find a building that we can hide in and make a plan while we're in there. Yes. And I also, because hearing all the, the howling, definitely want to uh, in defense position with hammer and shield. Okay. All right. So you all, do you just want to move to like the nearest building or something? Because you're you're yeah. you're coming into a street. All right, so yeah, you look around. There's a building near enough by that you can slide in there. You guys move into a small thatched roof, single floor building. Uh, Gentry motions you guys inside and takes up point by a crude window in this uh, small hut. He stays to the side of it, keeping out of direct view while watching out of it, leaving the four of you to discuss your plans. And so... You find the place I, uh, ransacked. Yeah. So, our let's see, our main objectives, uh, find survivors, find supplies, find who's in charge. We know who's in... Supposedly who's in charge should supposedly be here. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. So that is one locale that we could investigate. But also, we need to think of where we might most likely find the other two. The supplies and survivors, absolutely. Yeah, it's... we don't want to. We don't want to do too much traveling because that increases the chance of us yes. uh, running into like a zombie horde. Yes. As well as, I'm very curious about explosives. I don't know why I'm curious about explosives, but <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm wondering but if that probably is a bunch part of, of stuff the blew up. <laughs> yes. So I wonder if that is also going to be our way to like liberate some of these spaces, it, like especially if we do have to encounter. Yeah, we um, can also Bruce... investigate a source for the explosion. So four primary objectives. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Uh, do we roll for some insight or some? If um, you guys want to make rolls, if you want to, you guys do yeah. have some information you know as players that it has been a while, so it might just not be coming to mind. Um, but if you guys want to roll something, let me know what you're thinking on, what you're pondering on, and what you might like to roll for it, and I'll see if I allow that. So, um, go for yeah. it. Uh, I was going to ask. Uh, so, for the supplies and captives, mm -hmm. um, I would be thinking, trying to remember, what would be a place that was primarily used for storage? Because that way, it should be something relatively large, so that maybe there might be supplies looters missed. Or maybe it'll make a great place for them to corral their slave. And okay. Keep as a way to so go, you yeah. you want to think about like uh, where what captives might be kept yeah. first? Yeah, like what what's what's a well known warehouse in the town? Yeah, yeah. If you want to give me a society check, um, or again, a Westerville lore would work again. But uh, I, I would have to do society. Okay, go ahead. The closest thing you can think of is that you know around the windmills, there are a few warehouses uh, where they store stuff waiting to be processed or stuff that has been process is processed and is waiting to be shipped out. But that's the only thing that really comes to mind for you in that regard. Okay. So then I'll kind of direct that we may uh, just have to end up going towards the center of town to find any of these answers do we have any information on why roofs wanted to do all this like especially if like the thievery guild left because there wasn't a lot of money here is there like prior do we have any knowledge of Ruth's prior relationship with Westerville like was she gilded or um 
thrown out of a butchering guild or something like that. <laughs> butchery like, guild? Yeah. Um, you know what? If somebody wants to do another society check, I could also see... Uh, what what lore skills do people have? I have warfare. Uh, I have mercantile lore. Mercantile. We have Aramore, Alchemy, Eruxi, Mercantile, Orc, and Warfare. Oh, that's right. I can just check the party. Yeah, it's so handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Aramore lore could work here. Uh, society, again, could work here. Um, warfare lore is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Uh, it could. You could roll it if you want. I could roll society. Yeah, whichever you prefer. Do you want it blind? No, these can be public. Airmore, okay. Okay, well, it was going to be good. Oh, no, <laughs> hero point. If you want to, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so you can right-click on the roll itself. Yep, there you go. 18, yeah. all right, nice. Much better. Did anybody else want to roll on any any of this? Oh, uh, I just rolled, so I didn't know if I could. So this roll is recalling in information specifically about like the butcher, about who she is, okay. um, and how she is related to Weskerville. So good at those checks. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Oliver and Harry, you guys have heard, um very sort of distantly about the butcher boys um they are a roving band of marauders of bandits that have occupied the hinterlands for some time um they have they're kind of the biggest like gang in the area and not due to any proficiency or skill um but just because like anybody who really turns like fully to a life of crime kind of ends up under their banner just because okay. it they have so the they're the biggest out of sheer numbers yeah yeah and they do seem to have like a fairly high turnover rate now aurora who has maybe had a chance to speak with you know other guards during her training as a militia member has heard that the butcher boys are a little bit more of a recent group um, they've been here for, you know, about a decade. But before that, there was a, a different group. That's the big, like, bandit group. And while you can't quite remember the previous name, what you've heard suggests that the Butcher Boys came from this previous organization. Hmm whether due to a hostile takeover or something of that nature. So they're like a subsect of that other bandit guild? Yeah. They... Or more almost a child in a way? Yeah. Uh, much of their members originally came from there. And that group seemed to be a little bit more tightly run. Um, and the Butcher Boys, since their rise to prominence are notably more violent than this previous group. <laughs> uh, notably more casual with Carnage. Is there a, uh, is there a mission statement, if you will, or a purpose statement? <laughs> of what? Can uh, I fight? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, their their general mission statement is a uh, get rich and fuck shit up. All right, love that, love that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they're they're not a good group of people. Like you know, some people yeah. turn to crime to like feed themselves, feed their family. A lot of the Butcher Boys are just people that have a desire to hurt others and are allowed to exercise it in a group setting. They're, they're just dicks for beef. Yeah. Now, admittedly, a lot of them do 
Some of them are more in it for the money, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. There's... But where they get the zombies from? That <laughs> I guess that should have like. Well, yeah, I what's... think uh, I think even your captive told you guys like this is uh, this isn't us. This is the people we're, uh, that our boss has us working with. Mm. And that was Ruth. Yes. Ruth hmm. is the current leader, as far as you guys are aware, of the Butcher Boys. And zombies. So she's possi possibly strong and cruel enough that they would just listen to her. And either is or owns a necromancer. Potentially. <laughs> or yeah. owns. Yeah. Yeah. Just casually owning a necromancer. So this is the information that comes to mind as you guys put your heads together and think. But, um... When you guys are talking about supplies, what sort of supplies are you looking for? Um, explosives, food. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I was thinking food, tools to fight back, uh, uh, food. feelings. Yeah. yeah, probably actual weapon. Yep, survival, so, equipment uh, to like survive, and then yeah, I guess yeah. explosives for Aurora. Apparently, I mean, food <laughs> or defensive. Uh, <laughs> you know, any house has a chance of having food there are like restaurants obviously in town that maybe that you can find some food that hasn't been picked clean um the mills seem to be functioning they seem to keep the meals mills running so maybe there's a uh, food is still being processed still being created there as for other sorts of supplies stuff to maybe help fight back i mean as i said zach your shop was literally right next to a weapons and armor shop yeah, so weapons and armor there, and I would have True. all kinds of tools so we could make stuff. And my brain was thinking more ranged weapons because Ruth is so large. Well, I, like, it, is, I, it was a fully stocked weapon shop. Uh, yeah, he so likely, that's great. He at likely the time. did carry, yes, at the time. You're not sure, you haven't been here for a while, maybe it's just been fully, yeah. fully picked clean, but it was caught in the blast, at least partially. Right. So, maybe it being buried under rubble has protected it from some looting. Yes, yes. Makes sense. Oh, so, definitely want to explore it there. I also so, just get the sense that my brother is probably in one of these prisons, so that's why I was curious to where the survivors are. Mm -hmm. so I think... I think I would like to make our way that way myself. And Oliver's more in the hopes that, and this is a very optimistic approach, but he, his friends also manned one of the shops there. So if maybe they ever did have a chance and they're still alive to leave a note in their shop somewhere. Yeah. At some possible opportunity, like he doesn't know. He yeah. just wishes to possibly give it an opportunity. So you guys want to try to head back to our shops first? as stealthily as we can. Yeah. So. How's, uh, how's Silas feel about all this? He's been very silent during uh, these proceedings. I think he's kind of in the same mindset with Aurora because there's definitely like the missing person that he's really close to. Yeah, um, yeah. You're, he's um... gonna mostly just want to fall in line on this one. Yeah, you're looking out. You're you're still trying to find a uh, Brin. Yep, exactly. Okay. All right. So, with you guys all united in purpose and decision, uh, making for Harry's Hopping Hovelties and the adjacent Dreadwrath and Begone. Gentry checks uh, checks outside. All right. Ah. I think we're clear here. You ready to move? Yep. Let's uh I'll be as ready as we can be. Try to be as Absolutely. quick and quiet as we can. He nods, opens the door, and steps outside. Arrow at the ready. But uh 
sort of then steps to the side once he's certain it's clear to let you guys exit and lead the way. And so, you guys are moving through the town here. I'm going to need another stealth check. Ready. Beep, boop, beep, doop. You guys are surprisingly proficient at this. I know, for being only trained. <laughs> this time around. Just wait. Here comes my In time. <laughs> and here comes the giant one. <laughs> oh, okay. I just wish to say that okay. the smallest of the group is the one that did the worst. <laughs> it's because you're out in front. <laughs> you guys move through town and as you do you find the place has damaged the window shops have been broken in doors have been ripped off their hinges and goods that haven't been taken have been thrown out into the streets and trampled over there are few signs of life Aside from distance and occasionally nearby sounds, informing you of the roaming presences. As you round one corner, and Oliver maybe steps a little bit too far out, only to be caught by a uh, by Aurora pulling him back in as her ears detect something, as he's too focused on trying to stay soft, soft and silent. You all see. An immense figure, a large creature, mechanically, sort of dumbly standing in a street, looking up into the sky before it shuffles off, its heavy footsteps thudding against the ground till it disappears around the corner. Was it like humanoid? Mostly. Was it furry, scaly? Could we uh, tell? Seemed to have. It seemed to be wearing uh, these sort of like ragged clothes. Hmm. So it very similar to like Ruth, or, uh, did or... The, yeah, did it give the impression that it was actually alive, or is this a giant zombie? You. It was a quick glance, but it definitely okay. seemed to be more of just a massive uh, undead of some sort. Gotcha. They got but some so, big boys in here. Yeah. I think, I think Oliver, quietly, he just gives like a squeeze on like a sleeve of, of basically just, you know, thank you. <laughs> So you guys steal forward, and you manage to make it to the remnants of the town square where you all were when the attack began. And as you stand before it, maybe you remember what you, the scene you saw there. The undead lunging from uh, the crumbling buildings, the people running in panic, and uh, Silas, maybe you remember in particular, like, that just the sea of people uh, surging in panic and fear as you, like, tried to pull Bryn through it. Harry, you see your shop. Its windows have been broken. Many of the toys inside sundered, trampled over. Twisted and torn apart, leaving stuffing and string and wooden pieces scattered across your floor. What Harry do you guys want probably, to do? Yeah. Harry will probably just start slowly going into this shop to see what became of it. Gentry follows at your back, uh, but watches sort of like behind you. Staring, you know, untrustingly out into the square. 
Do does the rest of the party uh, follow Harry into his shop? Yes, I would. Yes, I would too. I'm also very curious if <laughs> any of the remnants could be used for like projectile items, range All of items, her... flammable items. <laughs> There's plenty of wood. Oliver will stick near the front. Um, mirror with Gentry, kind of keeping an eye out. Yeah, okay. So, Zach, your mm -hmm. shop is in ruins. Um, any till you might have had, any, uh, box with, you know, money from your, uh, your profits, it's gone. You maybe even find it, like, ripped open. Uh, fingers, like, denting. Or the wood or, like, metal or something. Uh, and any coins from it long gone. But probably more tragic is the scene of the toys. Uh, things you created to bring joy, to bring happiness. Ripped apart. Uh, shelves have been pushed over. S dolls have been, limbs have been twisted off of dolls. It is a scene of carnage to a toy maker. But, Harry will just kind of take oh. it all in and just sort of scout through, uh, heading from like the shop area back into like his bedroom area and maybe his crafting area. Into his workshop. Things look a little bit more ordered here. Your bed's been tossed. Um, tools have been taken. Not all of them, but... A good number. But through it all, as you're looking around, there is one thing that remains almost untouched. A figure sitting upon your workbench. Humanoid in form, but incomplete. With graceful limbs. That, uh, you haven't quite fully finished attaching yet. As Harryman... As you approach, there's almost a sense that this thing... It almost feels like it, it's been waiting for you. As Harryman uh, sees this thing, it was supposed to be, like, his grand creation. He was making this for, like, a child of a noble. It was supposed to be, like, a toy that could play back with them. And everything kind of just like starts flooding into him, all the emotions and stuff. And he kind of loses himself in sort of like a trance as he re begins to relive a dream over the past couple nights. He's been having this reoccurring dream, almost a nightmare that he doesn't re hasn't really been bringing up with anyone. And in this nightmare, he is working on this toy, but no matter what he does to it, he can't fix it. Everything he does, it just breaks it further apart. And the whole time, there is something just watching him from behind. And as this, almost as if reliving this vision, this dream, he sort of comes to with bruised knuckles and maybe a couple cuts on his fingers. And this toy that was once in pieces is now whole and standing over him. And this figure moves with unsettling, but ungraceful motions. And so you guys, you know, for the rest of the party, you maybe let Harriman, you know, go into his own private area to see like what's happening there. And it is, he spends some time back there. You guys can be doing other stuff during this time, but um, you maybe hear a clatter and you all, you know, gather and you like maybe rush back there to ensure that your friend is safe, to ensure that he is all right. And you see the utterly rabbit man on the ground and standing over him is a wooden creation 
a creature that looks like this. Partially burned, splintered, and torn is a faceless, mannequin-like body that's very reminiscent of a ballerina as it moves with rigid but graceful movements. Almost like every movement is a dance. And, and even that... though it has no face, no eyes, you can feel it watching. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, who are watching this on the stream, who's got the stream, or who's watching this on YouTube. This was a blast to be back, and we will catch you two weeks from now. God <laughs> willing! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Until this then, stay safe, be good, see you next time. Night stream! See you later, guys. <laughs>